Silver has been used for centuries for its antimicrobial action, including the ancient Greeks using it for wine and food containers to prevent spoilage, and it is the reason silver utensils are still commonly used. It is still used in medical settings to coat devices and impregnated into dressings for infected wounds and in creams to prevent burns from becoming infected. Colloidal silver has been around for a couple of centuries, but went out of popularity with the invention of antibiotics in the 1940s, but has researched in recent decades. It is a solution of tiny silver particles dissolved and held in suspension, usually promoted as an antiseptic for the skin. Yet there are also claims it can treat numerous infections, including AIDS, as well as treating diabetes and cancer. Unfortunately, ingesting colloidal silver or even its overuse on skin can have a dangerous effect, including turning your skin a silvery blue colour called Argeria, made famous by a man turning himself into a real life Papa Smurf. It can prevent the absorption of antibiotics and thyroxine, and more seriously, it can build up in organs such as the brain, kidneys and liver, as it can't be excreted by any known detox. I will cover the evidence of when silver is suitable as medical treatment, all the dangers and even its use in veterinary medicines. All my sources are referenced in the description box below, along with the timestamps if you wish to jump to a straight to a certain section. But before I start on the content, here are my disclaimers. I'm Eloise, I'm a UK pharmacist of 20 years and I'm passionate about clear, accurate information on medicines and supplements that everyone can understand. Please be aware the information I provide is for educational use and is my own opinion. However, I do my best to base it on the most up-to-date evidence. However, always contact your own healthcare professional for individual advice on your own personal situation. And so that I can get this information out there and all the other previous videos that I have done debunking medical misinformation, if you could like and um, comment, this would really help the YouTube algorithm and if you like my content and would like to see more of it please subscribe and hit the notification bell and double check if you've done this before that youtube hasn't removed this even before people knew about bacteria and viruses even as far back as the ancient greeks silver has been used to prevent the spoilage of food and drink and is the reason silver utensils are still commonly used Silver can disrupt the proteins and the enzymes in the cell walls of bacteria, viruses and fungi and has an antiseptic action if it's dissolved into solution. Since the 1800s, silver has been used in a medical setting to kill bacteria or to prevent its breeding. It has been used to coat devices such as breathing tubes and catheters as an extra measure of sterility. Silver has also been impregnated into dressings for infected wounds and in creams to prevent burns from becoming infected. The World Health Organization has even placed silver sulfadiazine cream on their list of essential medicines. Over recent years, there has been various studies to determine the effectiveness of these silver versions of devices, creams and dressings over the newer products to ensure that we are still doing the best evidence-based medicine. I have had a look at many different um, studies and had a good comprehensive critical analysis of these all. But I will link below some of these studies so that you can go and look at them yourselves. So in a meta-analysis, silver dressings do show a reduction in wound healing time for hard to heal leg ulcers and complex infected wounds. And it may still prove cost effective in some extreme cases. However, this isn't the case just for standard wounds. And although silver is toxic to bacterial cells, it's indiscriminate on the mix of good bacteria and bad bacteria in the microbiome. And the silver ions, especially in creams and solutions, can penetrate the skin barrier and remain there as the body doesn't have its own medicine for, uh, mechanism for removing it out of the body although I will go into detail on the toxic effects of ingesting silver in the next section. Therefore, due to the high cost of silver dressings and the potential long-term issues, the NHS doesn't recommend them for regular use for chronic wounds, and it should the availability is monitored and restricted to short-term use in complex cases, usually under the guidance of a specialist tissue viability nurse. 
Um, I will share a link below to Open Prescribing. This is a public website where you can go look at your local area and GP practice and find out how they compare to the NHS guidelines around many different medicines and indicators that have been done on GP prescriptions. On to colloidal silver, which has been around for a couple of centuries and was one of the original um, antiseptics that was used in a medical setting. It was even used during the plagues, but it went out of popularity with the invention of antibiotics in the 1940s and better alternatives that were safer for antiseptic and keeping a sterile environment. But it has research researched in recent years, especially in 2020. So what is colloidal silver? It's very tiny silver particles, um, literally that tiny that they can, can't even be seen under a microscope. They're in the um, range of being a billionth of a meter in size, and they are held in the suspension Usually um, the amounts in the products are usually in parts per million. So the use of colloidal silver and any of the products can only be promoted for external use only. And that is pretty much across the whole of the world. FDA in the US, um, the European Union, um, the UK, Australia. They, the use of colloidal silver can only be for external use. It cannot be ingested. and can only be promoted as an antiseptic solution. Although many products do try to claim um, other beneficial effects, such as being able to treat acne and other skin conditions. However, there's no consistency of what strength is required because there isn't the evidence out there, there isn't the studies out there to actually show any actual proven benefit and to show which strength is required. And that yes, Although colloidal silver does kill bacteria, it is an antiseptic. It um, doesn't care which bacteria it is killing. So when you place it on the skin, it will kill all bacteria, viruses, fungi that are on your skin. It'll clear the whole of your microbiome. And as you probably are already aware, you actually do need a balance of good and bad bacteria, viruses and fungi living on you to create a healthy environment. We are very dependent on good bacteria and a good microbiome. So um, they also claim that it has um, anti-inflammatory products, but, uh, um, properties, but actually it's the opposite. It actually can cause an inflammatory response because it is actually a substance that your body's not used to. It is not something that na is naturally occurring in any plants, bacteria, human cells. It's not actually required and it can actually be an irritant. And if you want to actually know more details about the use of it on the skin, I will link below a very good um, video that was done by Dr. Dre, who is a dermatologist here on YouTube. And she explains that there is no evidence for it. It can actually be inflammatory and it can actually lead to toxic effects. So yes, although silver can have beneficials in keeping the bacteria at bay on your skin, there is no evidence that we should be using it. It's just like saying, yep, yeah, so your acne might be caused by an overgrowth of bacteria. <clears throat> so let's just go get some... Um, antibacterial spray that we use on our kitchen worktop, spray it on our face to kill that bad bacteria causing our acne. Doesn't work like that. It's not safe for that. It's not proven for that. And it's gonna just wipe out all your different bacteria as well as causing irritation that you do not want. So that covers the skin aspect. And if you want to know more on the skin, go to see Dr. Trey. But now I'm gonna move on to the crazy claims but actually ingesting colloidal silver. So now on to the subject of ingesting colloidal silver. Now, as I've already said, worldwide, colloidal silver products cannot be promoted for internal use for ingesting. It's banned by the FDA um, and the European um, equivalent and the Australian equivalent and the UK equivalents, they have all deemed that the ingestion of colloidal silver is dangerous and toxic and should not be done under any circumstances. However, this doesn't stop people promoting products of colloidal silver 
for use in jesting. This is usually done by companies that um, don't actually use contracted employers to promote their products, but what they use is they use independent contractors, usually under an MLM structure, to promote this sort of off-label use, but it's not even an off-label use is in uh, medical circumstances, because usually in medical circumstances, when something is being used off-label, it is also backed up by many different um, studies and evidence, and it's just that the pharmaceutical company hasn't actually gone and got a license for that specific indication. This use of off-label is actually a banned use of off-label because it has been deemed dangerous, but this doesn't stop these companies still trying to promote it. There are various claims. You'd only have to have a quick look on TikTok, Insta, Facebook to see that they claim that because it kills bacteria and um, it kills cells, that it will also kill cancer cells, that people can ingest it and it will treat many different infections, especially that infection that went around in 2020. Um, they even claim that it will treat things like AIDS. And then they also claim that it's toxic to cancer cells because people have studied colloidal silver on cancer cells in a Petri dish in a lab. And yes, you pour the colloidal silver on the cancer cells in a Petri dish in a lab, kills the cancer cells. Unfortunately, that is not how it works in the body. So there they are busy trying to claim that ingesting colloidal silver will kill any bacterial infection you've got, any um, viral infection you've got, any cancer cells that you've got, um, but it won't because yes, you ingest the, the silver, but the silver doesn't actually specifically target specific cells. It just generally goes into your body. And the other problem with silver is that although it goes into your body, your body doesn't actually have a mechanism for excreting it because it's not a naturally um, occurring mineral or element that your body normally comes across in nature. So it doesn't know how to excrete it. So actually the buildup of silver doesn't go to where cancer cells is, doesn't go to where bacteria or viruses is, but quite often will usually go and be impregnated under the skin, in the brain, in the kidneys, or the liver. So that action of being able to claim that it ta targets the places where the bacteria are doesn't happen. And they also go on to claim many other different things that it cures diabetes, um, cures different other sort of inflammatory conditions, but all of these claims are not based on any scientific evidence. Just maybe incidentally, somebody might have started it while they were on a condition and they use that one incident of the person suddenly having a better face in their condition while they happen to try this and then promote that and go, this is the miracle cure. But there is no evidence out there for anything internally used. But I will now go on to the actual dangers of taking this. Continually ingesting colloidal silver and even its overuse on the skin can lead to long term problems. Unfortunately, as I've already mentioned, your body doesn't know how to get rid of silver out of the system. It's not something that your body's kidneys or livers know how to either metabolize or excrete out of your body. So it does lead to a build up. So if you've been applying it on your skin, it can absorb through the skin because of these tiny, tiny particles um, that are a billionth of a meter in length, so tiny that they can actually penetrate through the cell walls of your body, like they do with the penetrate the cell walls of the bacteria. Also does that penetrates through the cell walls of your skin and into the area underneath it. It will also, if you absorb it, systemically you ingest it it gets absorbed into your bloodstream goes around your body your body doesn't know how to excrete it but it will build up in places like under your skin in your brain in your kidneys in your liver the silver depositing under your skin will then actually turn your skin a silvery bluey color from actually the physical color of the silver showing being deposited in your skin. And this is actually called Argeria, um, AG being um, 
the term used for silver on the periodic table. And this silvery blue colour was made famous by a man turning himself into a real life Papa Smurf. So Paul Carson became a public figure in 2008 with his blue skin after consuming colloidal silver as well as applying it to his skin in the hope of treating his dermatitis, his recurrent sinus infections and his acid reflux. And he ended up on many different TV shows in many different magazines. And eventually he just stayed with that blue colour because it's not reversible. Even if he was to stop taking the colloidal silver, it's not reversible. Your body does not know how to excrete it. But he did continue in the hopes that the colloidal silver will provide him with health benefits. There was no proof that it ever did provide him with any health benefits. And he developed a heart condition and prostate cancer um, four years later in 2012 and then died from a heart attack and pneumonia in 2013. And although the cause of his death was probably unrelated to colloidal silver consumption, we will never know. But just because he died of something else doesn't mean that he was having no side effects from that amount of colloidal silver. The full extent of the dangers of consuming colloidal silver are still unknown because unfortunately we only have case reports that have come to light when people have actually admitted to consuming the colloidal silver and then developing problems. But there are case reports of neurological problems when the um, silver has built up in the brain and also of other odd organ damage such as the, the liver and kidneys and this has been enough for as i've said world, worldwide agencies um, banning the ingestion of colloidal silver um, back in 1999 the fda first banned um, colloidal silvers um, selling and um, claiming any therapeutic benefit um, in 2002 the australian therapeutics good administration have also said that there's no legitimate use, medical use for consuming colloidal silver. These different agencies have continually tried and chased different um, companies and individuals that have tried to promote colloidal silver as cure-alls um, for, for the use of many different things. And especially in 2020, when there was various amount of um, scams going out there trying to say what could be a cure and that yes just because something can kill a bacteria a virus or a cancer cell in the labs doesn't mean that if you ingest it that is going to happen within your body you need to be able to have that chemical or um, substance get directly to the bacteria virus or cancer that you actually want affecting and killing without it actually killing any healthy cells in your body, either your human cells or the good bacteria that we also rely on in our microbiome, in our intestines and in the skin microbiome. So <clears throat> I've got a feeling that in the coming years, we're only going to see more and more problems, especially when we have these companies that will produce a product, claim it's for external use only, say it's only for um, external use only, but they actually use independent contractors in an MLM structure to promote their products. And in that way, the company can deny any responsibility of the claims being made of their independent contractors, but still gain all the money from the sales of these products. And this is a really dangerous situation for many different supplements. When we've got these companies that will promote a product for one thing, they'll promote the colloidal silver as an antiseptic, say, oh, yeah, you can use it as an antiseptic for, for just cleaning, which is within the, the legislation, but actually allowing their um, independent contractors trying to sell it for other reasons and living, uh, living off people's fears of big pharma and the medical industry and wanting other solutions. I also have to say, these are also the silver builds up in your tissues. You cannot detox from it. It is a heavy metal that you cannot detox from. And quite often, these same people that are trying to 
say that colloidal silver will cure your problems, cure everything, are also the people that are trying to sell you detoxes for heavy metals that you were supposedly consuming in your everyday life that are toxic. Yet they're also selling a product which has a toxic heavy metal in it. And this is the problem when we've got people that are not medical professionals that are promoting products. And even worse, when we've got medical professionals that have been managed to be convinced by some of these com companies through the amount of money that they can make promoting these products. And this is a danger. And this is the reason why I am here on the internet promoting this information. So if you agree with me, please make sure that you share this video and share my message, subscribe, like, and comment to the ways that the YouTube algorithm are going to know that this is a message that needs to get out there, that we need to stop people going for these therapies that are potentially so dangerous. Although there are many influencers out there that will make claims that colloidal silver can be used for pets and animals, I will make this section very short and clear that there are no circumstances for giving your pets colloidal silver. All the toxic effects that I've described for humans will be identical in animals. And although veterinary care and products can be expensive, your vet will be able to advise on safe and effective products within your budget or point you in the direction of charities that can support you. And here is Nobby to confirm that. He's turned up at just the right time. So please look after your pets. Do not use any unregulated products on them. So thank you for watching. And as I've already said, please comment, share, like, and subscribe if you want to also make sure that other people know to avoid colloidal silver. So I hope you found it very interesting. And if you thought that this was crazy, you may want to look at my previous video about the claims for coffee enemas, or have a look through other compact content that I've covered, such as vitamin A toxicity and ozempic and um, melatonin subject supplements. Please comment below with any questions that you have and any ideas that you have for future videos that you would like me to cover. And I'm hopefully going live next Sunday if you want to ask your questions online. Thank you very much.